In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we're going to take a first look at the Particle Designer. It's not a tool you'll use often, but there are occasions when it comes in very handy. And in this particular tutorial, we'll focus on the three of the primary emit methods in the designer. Well, first of all, let me justify a place where you might want to use it. I have on the screen a promo for Easter. And I have in my media area a still image of an Easter egg, and I'd like to have it bounce along on our screen. So the normal way you do that is I take this and drag this to the highest track, and then I'll resize it, and we'll move it over to the left. Then we'll go into our image, double-click on it, and we'll do a little bit of keyframing. So I'll start at the beginning, move my playhead to the left, click the diamond in the position area, and then move it over a little bit. And then we will move it up, and it'll set a keyframe, and move it over again, and move it down, and it'll set another keyframe. And so I just have it moving up and down. So I'll click on OK. So when I go ahead to play this uh, in this particular segment, uh, what we're going to see is the egg moves up and then it moves down. Now that's fine, but what if I want a whole bunch of eggs to move at the same time? I could duplicate this over and over again and it would be very laborious. Let me show you a different way to do something like that. I'm going to delete that completely. And now we're going to go into our particle room, which is our F6 key. And then we have a whole bunch of particles to pick from. If I click on all content, I discover that I have 56 options, but none of them is the one I want. So I'm going to create one. In order to create a new particle design, you simply go to the upper right corner of that particular window. And if you hover over it, it says create new particle object. I'll do that and click on that, and then it's going to open. It wants an object. I'm going to pick my uh, Easter egg from my file system, and now I have the Easter egg. If I click on here on the Properties tab and click on the Emit method, that's the one we'll focus on right now. There are three primary emit methods. Now, you see a fourth one called a mask, and I have attempted to figure out how to use this and as of yet, it doesn't make much sense to me. I'm going to use on the ones that make, do make sense. First thing I, option I have is I can use the point. That means that this will multiply my little Easter eggs from a given point in time. And if I hold my mouse on the arrow and move it, that will be the direction in which the Easter eggs emerge from this point. And I can also move the point I can move it off the screen, I can leave it on the screen, and move it in any of 360 degrees. I also can control the angle at which they spread out. I can move, uh, move it closer and tighter. I can make it almost a bullet where they fly out. Let's play this one. Now they're flying out one after another in a steady stream. Or I can widen it any as much as I want where they can fly out and even more than 180 degrees at a time and now they're coming out that way so that's a look at at this first option you can control the angle and you can control the source and the destination in terms of location for source and any one of 360 degrees for destination so those are the, th the ways in which you can change it if you want a point emitted. The second option is line. Now this is slightly different. In the line situation, you have a source area, but you also have it, the source area is from the left red circle to the right red circle. So if I'm going, going to go 90 degrees down and play it here, then it, they will emit from anywhere in the line. If I widen it, 
and it will widen both sides at the same time. Uh, let's move it completely across our image in this case. Now, if I play it, I will have descending eggs coming down all across uh, the screen. And this is, frankly, what I would probably do in this particular setting. Let me give you, an, and again, you control the source. And in this case, it's how wide the emit area is. And then you can control the destination. The third one is the circle. And in the circle, we find that we can control the source of the circle and the tightness of the circle. So if I go ahead and start here, it will spread out from the circle at that point in time. And this is the starting location. So if I move it over to the left, let's see what happens when we play. It starts there. And so those are the three primary ways in which you can control the emission of multiple objects or multiple copies or variations really of the same object. Now you notice the particle room also has a fade in and fade out enabled. And if you don't want it, you can click on the fade area and turn both of these off. And then when you choose your emit method, uh, uh, it will instantly, let's go ahead and uh, make these come down again. We'll use the 90 degrees. It snaps to that really nice. And when I click it instantly, they start to fall. Now there are other options where you can control the number of eggs in this case, uh, the size variations, and some other kinds of things. We'll get to that in a different lesson. But I went, wanted you to see the basic emit methods. Again, I have attempted to try the mask method, and I am not satisfied with what it looks like. When I click on mask, it gives me a box that's supposed to be a mask. And if I click on some of these objects, I see no change in the box. Um, a little bit of variation in terms of, of how the objects come out. But the, like the I love you, I don't know how in the world, or happy birthday, I don't know how in the world that would look. Let's leave it on there and click on OK. Uh, by the way, when you finish it, it wants you to give it a name. I'll just call this egg. And now I have a custom method called egg. But I don't see any happy birthday here. I don't know how in the world that would work. Um, so I'm going to go back and re-edit that and use a simple line and we'll make it larger just for the sake of uh, this this particular tutorial and I'll start it up really high and then I'll click on OK and now it gives me a preview of my eggs okay so now what I'll do is I'll take this new particle that I've designed put it on the highest track uh, go back to my original video, and when I play it, I have falling eggs. And so this would be a lot easier than trying to keyframe uh, even a half dozen of these. So this is one occasion when you would use this kind of tool. We'll give you more details in the next tutorial. Mm -hmm.